All right, so man, listen, this is a great topic. This is probably one of the best things we can do. If you're listening to this, it's because either A, you're looking at growing your real estate brokerage, ultimately recruiting agents to your office. And if you've never done any sort of recruiting, we're going to really unpack where to start. So, um, you know, for us, we do have a philosophy and I'd like to talk a little bit about the philosophy at the beginning here. And one thing that I want to point out is, you know, the philosophy is really marketing. Recruiting is marketing. If you're going to be in in recruiting, you're going to be a marketer. And to be a marketer, you have to learn how to think like the client. It's that simple. Best the best marketers. And I have a quote. In fact, I shared it this morning. If you if you know Woods, when you go into your Facebook and you have like an old post that you can share from something you posted a long time ago, do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had a post from five years ago I shared, and uh, it's marketing is the key business and wealth building skill. Why? Because when you learn marketing, you learn to think like another person. Consciousness, so with with another person's consciousness, precision, and dedication, learning to think like other people is the key to creating values for others, which is the key for business success and ultimate wealth, wealth success. And here's the thing, the reason that's important. Where do you start? You have to start with the people that you're going to be marketing to, which is what we always say is the ICP, the in the ideal client profile. And uh, there's so many different types of clients. You know, uh, one type of client is a new agent. Another type of client is a team. Um, another type of client might be an independent broker, but all of those individuals, they're going to bed at night. They're thinking differently. And so the way that you need to start is you need to start by making a list of people that you would like to attract, people you know, making that list also of the people that you don't technically know, but you would like to attract. So people you've met and people you haven't met. And it's really at the core of taking that list and segmenting it based upon their ICP really gives you the clear next steps, which is how you're going to engage with those people. I think that, you know, before you start any type of thing, you have to you you have to start with who you're going to go after. And you have to start with one. And I and the reason is like this morning I went on a walk with Jay. We walked five, almost five miles. And if this guy doesn't walk up to me now, this is he's going to think I went on this topic because of our walk. You know, dang well, we were going to record this yesterday. And he yep. goes on to tell me about how he has these calls with people yesterday and that his biggest problem is where to start and what to say. And he tells me the same. And the truth is that it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before because he forgot he'd already told me the story. And I listened to it intently and what it comes down to. And then I had a coaching call with another top agent group at eight o'clock. We ended up getting on at eight o'clock after my walk. Same thing. Where to start? And so it's not, you know, think about when someone's listening to this podcast, they want to know where to start. And the truth is, is what I told this individual, and I'm just going to tell you, you know, I had an outline and notes, but then there's what I did today. And what I did today was I realized you got to start with one. You can't have. So for these individuals, they've actually had products and service, the real estate agents that they sold to real estate agents and helped them. These individuals are completely different than a guy that I'm working with in Tulsa, who's a lender, which is completely different than another person that I'm working with that's never sold a home. Right. All three different people, all three people are going to have to independently start different, right? Yesterday I had a call with Delisa Rose. For her, it was an independent broker who was wanting to move the whole brokerage over. She where she was, she had somebody, and and then um, what is the guy that you did yesterday, Ronald Parks? Yeah, I mean, Ronald. Text, Ronald texted me this morning that he has a person. Every one of these people knows somebody. You you have to start with the hit list. You have to start with making the, if you want to know where to start, if you want a framework, then don't skip this step. Make the list, segment the list. Now, here's where you can segment the list. You can segment the list of number of ways. And I believe that knowing the problems, Woods, I know that as a marketer, that's the most important place we start because we take advantage that we already made the list. Right, but, right. But people don't always make the list. And that's why I want to, I want to be very direct, tactical. You start with making a list of the people and that list is going to be segmented and you want to come up with a hundred people. You want to, you want to, the, now here's the thing. You might, a friend of mine, and I'm giving, I'm going to give a lot of context here. Al Stasek, he does a thing, Rock and Restock. He invites agents in his community. It's now called Rock and Rescue where they help 
um, uh, raise money for child uh, uh, for to help children that are being sex trafficked and help prevent that. Well, he invites agents all through the community. And, and here's the key. You ready? You want to know why people suck at recruiting? It's not what? once they not once they make the list. Think about it. What's the most important part of a webinar? The title slide, right? Because you, 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 the, the title slide is what makes people. Well, in recruiting, the most important part of recruiting is the opener. It's the opener. And I, it, it's, it's period. If you do not have a good opener, let me tell you what you're going to get within 15 seconds. Somebody trying to get off the phone. And so if if in, in your opener, like your offer is elastic in a webinar to your title slide, your opener is elastic to who you're targeting and what you're offering, right? So I was talking to, again, Daniela Batch yesterday. And for her, it was, she wants to do a lunch and learn, right? So if you're, if, if you're inviting somebody to a lunch and learn. So where does she start? Well, she starts with making her list, segmenting that list, and then deciding what is she going to, what is, where, where is she, what is she going to do with each one of these individuals? And, 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 and here's the thing. Am I going to be a, am I going direct? Am I going to have a direct offer? Is this going to be something? Because if you're going to have a direct offer, then you're going to have a different opener than if you have an indirect offer. You're going to have a different engagement. So what you're doing is you're organizing this top 100 list. And then basically what you're doing is you're individually assigning what you're going to. This is the low hanging fruit. This is where to start. You're going to you're going to decide what makes that 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 prospect. OK, this is a new agent, hasn't sold any homes before. This is an experienced agent that I worked with. You're going to define, you're going to segment these people and then you're going to define what you're going to invite them to, which is the offer, because this game is all about inviting what you're going to invite them to. And then you're going to decide what your opener is, right? So for example, um, in this story that Jay was telling me, he was talking about Andre and Andre was on the phone with the third another guy that was a new recruit on a three-way call already came over, but he was on the call with Jay to talk about building his revenue share at EXP. If you're with EXP, great. If you're not with EXP and you don't know much about it, you should definitely look into it. It's an amazing business model that compensates its agents through revenue share, which is really referral fees for agents that they bring to the company and their contribution for helping the company grow. And so this individual was talking to Jay and Andre said, because remember, Andre started, like he worked specifically a target audience on LinkedIn, right? So he worked LinkedIn and he did it for, with me and Jay. He's a licensed data agent. He would, he, he worked people that were uh, linked to us on LinkedIn. So his opener was, hey, have you heard of what, have you heard of Michael Reese and Jay Kinder? That was his opener, right? And, and Jay used to say, if they know us already, you say, have you heard of what Mike and Jay are up to? But what Andre would say is, have you heard of Michael J or, or Michael Reese or Jay Kinder? And this guy's on the other line, other side, literally role playing with him. And Jay said he crushed it. Just absolutely. The guy gave him like, Jay was like, well, Andre, what do you say? Andre wasn't prepared. He didn't get on the call knowing. He went just straight instinctive, went through what he said. The guy threw him two objections. He said he murdered him, murdered the objections. And here's my point is that he had he had a very specific audience. He talked to people typically that were on LinkedIn that were connected to us, but didn't always know us. If they did, he had an Oprah and a three, hey, have you heard of Mike and Jay? Then what he did was he told them what we were up to and his core story of what we had done for him and what that had also done with another success story. So he went the coaching growth route. He said, well, man, these guys have helped some of the top agents in the world grow their business. Built, built some of the help build some of the best teams in North America and we recently partnered with them and through the partnership he told what their business growth was by percentage we're up X percentage and not only that they've helped a couple of my friends he told a, a story about someone else would you be interested to learn more how they're partnering with agents like yourself and how they're doing it and not charging a dime I mean and that's that's basically what he went to and so again, where do you start? Well, with Andre, if you if you have, and this is kind of sending a mixed signal, but this is just my belief. 
when you have your top 100, I would personally start with my Mets. That's where I would, I would, I would segment the people because that's going to be the easiest and lowest hanging fruit. And so you're going to have to come up with an opener. And so people that you've met maybe have not been engaged with you. So just texting them. No, you have to re-engage with them. So let's say, let's say I have a list of a hundred people and 26 of those people are people I met. I'm going to send them a text message and say, Hey man, I was thinking about you, what you've been up to. I'm going to ask an open question to get them re-engaged, right? And then just like a listing appointment, I'm going to try to set that up. Now, there's two things I want you to identify. One is if you try to set that up, like, let's say this is what Daniela said. Well, I sent them to text and they didn't, they didn't text me back. Then call them and leave them a voicemail. Hey, this is Michael Reese. I just want to let you know I sent you a text. I wanted to check in on you, man. Um, I hadn't heard back from you. So anyway, if you get a chance, I know a lot. The, it's been a crazy world the last feels like couple of years. Uh, love to catch up. Either text me back when a good time is to chat or I'll, I'll send you an email with a link to my calendar, you know, so we can jump on a phone or you can invite them to lunch. Whatever you want to do. If you met someone, re-engaging with that person is step one. Once you re-engage, you want to transition. You want to transition into an invitation. And so one of the things that people have to understand is I didn't start in my backyard. So I started in the world. So for me, that transition for me is if they were in my backyard, if they're in your backyard in your local community, what can you do? You can transition into an invite to a lunch and learn. So, so here's the thing that you need to know. You have your you have your list and you have all of the things. Have you ever seen like when you were in like elementary school, it was like, hey, draw, there's like draw a line to the things that make the same. And it's like a, a piece of cheese and a mouse. And then it's like an apple and a worm. And you you draw the lines. What you do is you need to make a list of all your people and you need to make a list of all of the things you can invite to. That's what you have to do to start. And then you have to decide on that list which things you're going to invite to. So like one of the things that Woods just talked about was an event and he called it a training. And the way you're going to make this connection is because when you re-engage with this person, your goal is to be a listener. When when you you it, remember what I said about marketing, it's about your ability to think like the other person. You're never going to know what someone's thinking unless you ask questions and listen. When you can identify what their desire is, or like Woods mentioned early on, their problem, then you can then you can start to put together how you're going to invite, how you're going to open, and what you're going to invite them to. I'll give you an example. So me and Woods, we did a live double your business event, right? Now, doubling your business is a training that we're skilled to, to teaching. Now, we could have done how to get your real estate license and make $100,000 a year selling residential real estate. Who's that target market? That's anybody who does not have a license who's looking, who's entrepreneurial, looking, are thinking, are interested in getting their real estate license, right? Again, that's an audience. I have the people I met. The people I met usually in this scenario are already going to be licensed, right? So I'm going to re-engage those people. Now, if I already met them, here's, where I, here's what I want to point out. This is very important, especially for people who are recruiting to a brokerage like eXp Realty. If that is you, this is critically important. You have one chance, one chance where it where recruiting is the easiest. This is the easiest it's ever going to be. And that is in the beginning, before you've actually joined EXP, is inviting those people to look at the opportunity and poke holes in it before you jump off the cliff. If I could, if I could say one thing, that makes everything else infinitely easier, meaning meaning the re-engagement, the conversation, the clarity of what to say, aligning all your prospects to one offer, not having to overcomplicate it. That conversation is going to be completely different six months, 90 days later than it is when you're a week out. And I want you to know that's how Jay Kinder and Michael Reese were recruited to EXP. Is a friend of ours reached out to us letting us know that he was about to make a huge decision in his business and that before he did, he respected us and he would 
be very grateful if we would take a look at it, protect him from making a bad decision. Guys, if you want to know where to start, if you're already at EXP, the one thing you can do is when you do bring somebody on, create a process to make sure that you communicate to them to make their list and use the jump off the cliff script, you know, a week before they come over and explain it. Because that one window of time can not only give them a great experience, it can give them some low hanging fruit, some great wins and other people who they just got their attention. They got their interest. So inviting them to the next thing is going to be easier. But if you do, if you do the jump off the cliff script, and this is where I thought you were going Woods is I think it's brilliant to watch the video with them, right? It's it's the way that, and, and again, I know that I'm being over communicate. I'm, I'm communicating intentionally very linear and very direct because I assume someone's going to listen to this and when they go to the next step, I don't want them making the list and then doing this and then doing that. I'm telling you what to do. You make the list, you identify all the things you can do as far as making an offer, your job is to create a, 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 a thing. If you want to do it easily and unify it all up front, use the jump off the cliff script. If you can't do that and go backwards because you're already here, then that's – I just want to point that out. Again, once you make that list and you do that jump off the cliff script, that jump off the cliff script is when they watch that video, you want to – we call it a proctored. It's a proctored exam. A proctored exam is when someone sits there with you. You want to show them, you know, and this is an important part because one of the things people always ask me, what do I send? What They're looking for the process, the step-by-step. -step. You're setting this up like a listing appointment. You're This is somebody that you know. Now, you can do it over Zoom if for some reason it's not convenient to get face-to-face. -face, but but you want to get a commitment of, hey, man, I want to show, show this to you, right? If you say... I want you to watch it and then give me your feedback, which you can do. I'm not saying that anybody has not done that and it's not been successful. In an ideal situation, if I only got one shot, one shot, I'm sitting there because on every encounter with the prospect, you're always trying to schedule the next interaction, right? So let's say, you know, I I, I do the, I'm going to jump off the cliff. I do the, they, they give me feedback. I say, that's great. That's great information. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to, I might be calling you back uh, for uh, uh, some other questions. If you think of anything else, if you'll reach out to me and I'll circle back with you as well. Right. What happened with us is when we saw that we, 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 the way that the mind works and it's, this is, I saw a whole deal that a, a, a top marketer did. It's, it's the mind, the way the mind works as an, um, it's, they, he, there was a word, the animal mind, right? And it was talking about why the mind, it's way easier to sell through stories because when the mind will open to a story to listen to a story versus a statement, right? Like why you should join EXP. But if you're telling a story of why you might be making this move and why you need help, they're going to move forward with no defenses and they're going to see the offer, right? And the goal is, is that once they've been exposed to the offer, what we did was we saw why we should be doing that. And I've had that happen many times. I've literally had an agent go and do this exact same thing with his broker, who used to be the formerly largest broker for all of one of the top franchises in the world. In the world. Huge brokerage. He literally did this with him. And that broker, two weeks later, came over with him to EXP after he made the move. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to skip this step. Now, my question is, is, is we have our top 100. We have the things we can invite to. You talked about we can invite to events. One is a training event. A training event is going to be, remember, when we're sorting this list, we're going by socioeconomics. You know, you're not going to go to a guy making $100,000 a month. And, 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 and you're making $100,000 a year and talk to him about growing his business. This is an important thing to understand, right? So we're, 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 we're identifying the people that make less than us, the same as us, and more than us. So we got the names, the economics. if we've met them and haven't met them, and we have this set of offers. And your only job is to identify the most compelling offer 
And so you have to have an opener. And I'll give you an example. I'm talking to a real estate brokerage. This broker is at a real estate franchise and has been pitched the XP six times, right? Period. I didn't ask him. He told me that free willing. That was on him. I knew that I wasn't good. He knew everything about EXP. So the real goal of mine was I needed to identify why this individual hasn't been joining. Who And he literally told me out of his own mouth woods. It's like they don't listen. They talk to me about this. They tell me about that. They tell me about that. They don't even know. Listen, this is the, this is the thing that I'm looking for. You're looking, you're, you're, when you're talking, you're asking questions to find out what keeps them up at night. What's the rock in their shoe? If they could wave a magic wand and fix anything in their business or have anybody's business in the world, what business would they want and why? What are the things that they want in their business that they currently don't have? And, and your job is to, your job is to be able to think just like them. Your ability to think like them allows you to connect the dots on how to invite them, right? And so with this individual, because he had he had seen everything under the sun, and I'm, this was a little, um, this wasn't a script. This was understanding the principles. Is I invited him to a live event. I said, "Listen, you've been pitched six times. Why don't we make this the last time ever? You never have to look at it again. Get all your questions answered in one fell swoop. Not have this keep you up at night in the back of your mind, because it could be a very expensive decision." If you make the wrong decision either way, we're doing an event in three weeks in Dallas, Texas. The great part about it is we have Tony Robbins, who's going to be there. You're going to see the top independent brokers and teams share their experience, why they've come over. They're all accessible, meaning if you have any questions, you're going to be in the room. You're going to see the founder, the CEO over international. Everybody's going to be there. Make what be my guest. Now, my offer was. If you decide to come, I'll get you a hotel room and a ticket to the event. All you got to do is get there. That's what I offered him, right? This guy has, I mean, the lifetime value, and we won't get into this, but we will get into this in a future episode, and you need to look for it, which is the customer acquisition cost. I knew that I was willing to make that investment because if I made an investment like that, just like an angel investor, over time, one of those investments would pay off. And it would far exceed the investment, meaning it would be a good investment, a good ROI. And so I invited him to that event. Here's the problem, Woods. And this is this is word on the street. The problem is agents don't know their upline. So you need to know your upline. You need to know your story. You need to know your story or a story from your upline based upon the profiles of the people you're going to go after. So you need to know success stories from independent agents, brand new agents, agents who were on a team and left the team, agents who um, were working on the buy side and wanted to get on the list side, agents who benefited from agent attraction, rev share in a short amount of time, agents who benefited from agent attraction um, but never sold a home, agents their first year in the business who did good. You're wanting to collect these stories because you're in the, and here's a book we're going to give you, Tell to Win. You're in the business of getting the attention. So it's re-engaging, getting the attention, creating interest and desire, and then telling a story that's going to lead in that story to the outcome that they're looking for, to the solution that they're looking for. And not only is are those stories helpful when you're having a conversation with that person to get them engaged and to be able to potentially expose them to an offer, it's also an offer in and of itself. So when you have some, when you know that one of you, maybe a leader in your organization in your upline has um, has built a, a a huge team and then expanded into other markets or or whatever it is, right? And then that is the actual problem that that person, that prospect that you're talking to, is dealing with. Oh man, you're kidding me. Oh, you're trying to you're trying to build a team. Dude, you've got to meet one of my business partners. This per, he built a team, built it up to, you know, be the top team, took over a market very similar to yours. I'd love to introduce you to to one of my partners. You know, I I I can tell you this. There's not a problem that you're going to face that this guy hasn't solved, right? And so again, that's just another opportunity to invite and to get them connected you know, by 
connecting them to a person in your organization up or down that has their same problem that has been solved. Um, and, uh, you know, as a result of, you know, coming over to EXP and, you know, and partnering up. We're really talking right now about being direct, right? That's what we're jumping off the cliff is you're directly exposing somebody to the EXP offer, right? We're not, there, there are things that we've done that are very successful indirectly. Um, and I think, I do think that, you know, understanding the difference of indir an indirect approach is going to be me inviting someone to a, a training, a webinar. Maybe we're doing something online. Um, that's going to be indirect. Inviting someone to EXPCon, the Build Conference, Mastermind, you know, inviting someone to a three-way call. Um, those in the, again, you have your top 100. What is the goal of the top 100? Expose them to the offer. How are you going to expose them to the offer? You have to get them interested by having an opener and a script that allows you to build a bridge to them seeing, well, what's in this for me, right? And you can't tell them what's in it for them, WIFM, unless you've asked some questions. And it's kind of weird to just call someone and start asking questions unless you created context and a framework that got this re-engagement, right? And so if I'm, if, if, but once that offer has been exposed, the gloves are off. The gloves are off. This is my favorite part. This is where people, let me explain something to you guys. I've gotten on, a, I mean, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I've had people tell me absolutely not laughed. And at the end of the call said, where do I sign up? So I do not operate from, I operate, let me, let me tell you, here's where you can start. You need to change your mindset. I operate, when I look at my top 100 list, I think one thing, all of them are coming. Every single one of them are coming. They might not come today, but they're going to come to EXP. And so I, I, I want to be able to invite. Now, I also believe in my heart and soul, and this comes through my knowing of not believing, but knowing because I've had experiences where people I can show you. When they were at one brokerage versus another, they would have not earned the 1.2 million in stock. You know, at one point last year, I think 10,000 invested in EXP was worth at 189,000 at one point during last year. So I believe that agents who don't get ownership, don't get stock, don't get health insurance, don't get access to world class training. And, you know, so many times, Woods, and I hate this, so many times when I'm in a group of people at a big dinner table, 30 people, and they're all talking about, their story of how they moved over. You know what they always say? Man, people don't get the collaboration. And they try to go, it's so hard to articulate collaboration, right? It's like trying to tell something that they, like a person who's never had a good loving family and loving mom and dinner and great Thanksgivings and Christmases. And, you know, um, they never hung, you know, the Christmas tree and had a family ritual and put Christmas lights on the house and had these little things that they look forward to more than, you know, all, I mean, they work just to have those special magical memories. Like that's hard to sell to somebody who doesn't know anything, right. Who's been out there just slugging and gunning all by themselves and doesn't even have any awareness. They're unconsciously incompetent that there's actually people out there that have solved your problems that will care about your business just are more than you do and help keep you motivated when you're not and have a vested interest on helping you succeed. It's, it's, and, but that's hard to sell. It's hard to understand. Right. And so when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're thinking about what, where to start, I believe you want to use principle-based thinking. Is this person need more leads? Are they having problems with conversion? Do they have low productivity per agent? Listen, are they miserable? Maybe they're the, you know how many times I talk to people, they're a top team and behind closed doors, they say, I'm just tired. I mean, their they're, they're, they're tongue's dragging on the ground, right? There was a top Remax um, team and you and I both know this individual who told me a story I'll never forget. I was out in the hall at a conference and he said, you know, the reality is, is like, I, I literally um, went on stage to an accept award 
an award at Remax for the top team. It was a production based award. And he said, in that month, I wrote a check to my business. So even there's, there's people that you, they have the outward appearance of, of success and all the vanity metrics. But the reality is maybe they have an issue with profitability. Maybe they didn't scale their business, you know, in a way that's that's producing profit and adding to their bottom line. And they got all this complexity and headache. So, you know, the it, it, it's getting to the root of, of being able to identify the rock in their shoe, identifying their big problem. Man, that's the key. If you have something that you're good at, if you have a native genius, you're an expert at something, maybe you've hired an ISA, you're good with virtual assistants. Knowing that information and kind of knowing your sweet spot is going to help you with identifying who you should target and probably where you're going to be able to deliver the most value. And uh, it might be something that you want to prioritize. Now, here's the thing. That's the all, that's all the marketing side of things. Okay. That's marketing. You know, marketing can be done in the written word. It can be done in the spoken word. You know, I, lo- I love this process because everything that I've ever done is if I do it over the phone first, I can iterate. Remember, in marketing, a funnel that works perfectly the first time is called a miracle. You're going to find your way. You have to start. You have to make a call today. You have to make, when you make your top 100, you don't make your top 100 and check the box. You make a call, and we're going to talk about at the end where it all begins. But before we get there, let's talk about the sales process. Let's just assume you've identified your top 100, you've created the invite, you've connected. And you now have an opener and you have what you're going to say. And we can, listen, if you haven't went to AsianAttractionTraining.com, go there. There's a free class. It's linear. And we're going to be uploading some of the best scripts. We've already got some up there, but we're going to continue throughout to you know this week, next month, next year, the best practices. So make sure you plug in and you come back. If you haven't been back uh, in a while, go check it out. But here's the point, the sales process. Here's the sales process. First of all, you're always going to want to, you know, if you have a numbers person, an independent broker, and you have somebody in your upline that had those same challenges, you're always going to want to connect that three-way call to someone who's going to be the best fit. So where you start on creating your sales process, because you have your marketing process, marketing's job is to put a qualified opportunity into the hand of a qualified salesperson, right? Well, a qualified opportunity for us means is they've been exposed to the offer and they have questions, Right. And so whether you jumped off the cliff with them, they've been exposed to the offer. They asked you some questions and you transitioned into scheduling a three way call, which is basically where this where this decision is going to really be offered to them. Here's the thing that I want you to first understand. Here's where you start. Start by finding out your upline. Find out about your upline. Go interview them. I had this happen to me the other day. A girl called me, said she was in my sixth level. She wanted to know a little bit more about she didn't know nothing about me. When we got off the phone, she was like, well, I'm going to be calling you, right? She just was, she was just going through the, um, through the process. So identify your upline, get a little bit of their backstory, ask them to share any success stories, whether that's so that you can, again, add to your bank. You can always tell, I I can tell a success story Woods has, one that Jay has, Jay can tell one that I have. We're always indexing and collecting like baseball cards, these success stories and complete, and we're just telling them over and over and over. So Go to your upline, find out and ask, hey, listen, do you know anybody who particularly you lean towards when it's uh, an independent broker or when it's a large team or when it's um, somebody who wants more leads? They might have someone. So go get that done. Let's not make this a long, drawn-out process. You should be able to get that done in, in, in a couple hours. And then once you've identified those people on that call, you're going to ask them, um, how would they like to be um, notified when you have somebody. Most people in your upline, especially as you start to move up, are going to have a process. I have a process, which is a calendar with a training, you know, and that's a whole different story. We'll upload Woods, the the three-way call training to agent attraction training. Um, And that's the training I give. And that's training that just happened in real life. Every time I did a three-way call and it went bad or it was teed up wrong, I made notes and then I created a training. I think it's two videos. One's 11 minutes, one's two minutes. But again, you want to tee up that three-way call. And if you understand that transition on how to tee up that three-way call, then remember, you've taken somebody from LinkedIn, you've re-engaged them, maybe you knew them. Once you've re-engaged them, you've connected an invite 
to an event. Maybe you invited them to a live webinar you're doing next Tuesday that's training agents how to go from 25 deals to 100. Maybe you're teaching them how to add four listings a week to their business. Maybe you're training them how to um, to own the expired market in their market. Maybe you're teaching them how to get two to three referrals every month, right? Whatever it is that you're teaching them. Maybe you're teaching them how to turn transactional income into referral income. Whatever it is that you're teaching them, that's what you're teaching them. So you can invite them to that. That's the training. Or you can go direct to Lunch and Learn. Maybe, you know, you've talked to your upline. Uh, maybe the person that sponsored you, like me, um, the guy that sponsored me, that sponsored him, that sponsored him, that they did a Lunch and Learn every every week in my market. So I could have invited to that every single week. The great thing about that, it's lunch. Everybody's got to eat lunch. And you know, that's good. That's good. Uh, that's good agent bait. You know, you tell them it's going to be some Chick-fil-A nuggets there with the Polynesian sauce. You probably have a couple show up just for the nuggets. So again, you know, it's all about inviting, knowing where you're going to invite them, knowing who you're going to invite, and then getting that sales process dialed in. And I think one of the things that you that you mentioned that's important is get an agreement with your leader that you're going to be doing three-way calls with. Let them know your goals. Tell them your goals. Say, hey, listen, I'm going to be inviting you know, I'm going to, this is, these are my goals. I'm going to be inviting people. I'm trying, my goal is to do, put you on six, three way calls every single month. And so I just want to need to get a commitment from you on what your process is. And if I put these people in the calendar, you're committed to helping me with this. And they're going to gladly um, accept that challenge and, and encourage you in that process. Now, one, one, we're going to finish with two things and Woods, I'm going to let you hit on one of them because you mentioned it earlier. We have an entire training for this. But um, you talk a little bit about what you were saying, because I think what you said is earlier, you said to me um, before we were recording this is one thing that they need to do is start with that wealth chart. So, yeah, why, yeah, why so, is that important? Well, here's what's here's what's most important is that you need to have some type of a system for managing this and for tracking your progress. And I can tell you that the, the best system that works is the one that you use. So you need to have a simple system, especially when you're just getting started. So having some complex system like that's, you know, got all this automation or some kind of technology solution, spreadsheets, all of this stuff, it doesn't work as good as what we've, what we all used, which was, is called a wealth chart. It's literally like a poster board um, size thing that you print out and manually use sticky notes with people's name on them and move them through the process. It's like a visual sales process where you can kind of track, you know, what's going on. And there's something that's magic about the tactical process of writing somebody's name down, of moving them from being on your hit list to invited or engaged or, you know, exposed to the offer, right? Like, there's something that's really tactical about that. So you got to get a system in place for tracking that. We have, um, yeah, if you go to agentattractiontraining.com, we have a training on that. And we also have um, our wealth chart, our version of it that you can print out. And it's compatible um, to use with a certain size sticky note and everything. So that, that manual process, and I think especially up to, what I always tell people is especially up to your first 20 people, you want to stay manual. That's what we all did. Um, until we started, you know, once you, you start want to be able to touch it, on. move it, you know, yeah. interact with it. You don't want it to be, you want to see it. Yeah, absolutely. You want it front and center. And so there, there's two things that we'll end with. And, and one thing I want to point out to you guys, if you haven't had an opportunity, um, a lot of the training that we're doing now are in the future. We're, we're doing a lot on YouTube. So make sure you go check us out. YouTube.com forward slash Michael Reese. YouTube is probably one of the most powerful things you can do for your real estate business and your agent attraction efforts. And that all starts with going out and seeking, finding out what other people are doing, what calls to action, what are their marketing, what is their, who are they talking to, you know, what I, what content are they putting out there? So make sure you go out and check that out. I think it's just one of those things that if you're committed to this, and here's what I mean by that. If you're committed to this, where you really start, you know, I said, you know, this is all about where you start and what to say, but where you really start is with the calendar. That's where you really start. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that makes me and Woods great is we fell in love with the process of doing research. In fact, you know, we can we can research something to death, you know, and, and the thing is, is that when you research something and you've taken notes and you've internalized it and you make that a habit, you don't realize the compound effect over time of how 
more articulate you come, how much more awareness, how much more understanding it's, it's, it is, you know, understanding other people. And so what we do is we, we started, when we started agent attraction, we started with the calendar and that was, we put 90 minute jam sessions, a 90 minute jam session is a philosophy that we adopted when we wrote our first book. And basically what it meant was spending 90 minutes a day on working on the book, whether that was the outline, whether that was working on the cover, whether that was working on the subtitle, whether that was working on the uh, formatting, the calls to act, all, I mean, there was tons of stuff that we had to do. And in order to create the future, we had the the drawl of today. Someone always needs something today. There's always something that's got your attention today. So you, you know, it's like a monkey bar in order to move forward, you got to let go of something. So Letting go of 90 minutes in your calendar is one of the best things you can do for your business. And now you're creating the future by working on the future. That's number one. Your calendar is going to reflect where your true priorities are. The main thing is, is that if you want to get, if you want to be successful in any area of your life, you have to get order organized. If you want to get better in fitness, if you want to get better at age and attraction, you have to organize, you have to prioritize and have discipline. You know, I watched some uh, videos on discipline with a some of the most disciplined people in the world. And they were like, you know, one of the best things to start being disciplined is just eat three meals a day at the same time. So that you, because a rhythm, a rhythm will set you free. Getting into a rhythm will set you free. And so I would suggest you find a time that you could commit to because it's the very act of, if you give yourself the flexibility of moving it and I'll do it later today and doing that, then you're not really creating the muscle that you need. And becoming successful is about who do you have to become in order to achieve, to be worthy of, uh, you know, the things that people have that you don't have. And to do that, it's all personal development. So have the discipline after the 90 minutes, we moved to freedom Friday. So we went to from 90 minutes a day to an entire day on Friday. Um, I know, I know then at one point for a small stretch, I was doing till noon where I was working and then it just became, you know, pretty much full time where I was blocking out the other things incrementally, like, okay, well, I need to do this. Let me go ahead and put that in the calendar and then make my calendar available to my entire network for three-way calls, uh, whether that's webinars, launch calls, YouTube videos, questions, QA, whatever it is, and unstuck calls. So the point is, is getting your calendar, getting your calendar um, in line. We will be doing an entire um, kind of more in detail walkthrough of exactly what calendars we have, what we use them for, how we use them. And kind of that evolution of what the what the day in the life looks like when you go from no one in your downline to 100 people to 500 to 1,000 to 6,000. You know, your responsibilities and roles change as you become a soldier, a captain, or a general. And um, hopefully you've liked this podcast. If you have liked this episode and you like this direction, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go check us out on social media. And if you're looking to grow your real estate business, then make sure you go check out listingclass.com. There's a class there where we show you what's working right now. Literally, the things that we teach on there can really make your phone ring every day. I don't believe the best agent has the biggest real estate business. They definitely don't make the most money. It's the best marketer. If you want to become a better marketer, if you want to attract more people to you that are predisposed to do business with you, if you want to work with more listings, check out Listing Class. And with that being said, Woods, that best life to live is the life by strategy, baby. All right, y'all take care, man.